Blink. The Power of Thinking Without Thinking by Malcolm Gladwell. Overview. Blink is author Malcolm Gladwell's follow-up to the book that put him on the map, The Tipping Point, which was about how small ideas morph into big trends. With his follow-up title, Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking, Gladwell takes a more psychological approach towards his writing, with a focus on rapid cognition, also known as quick thinking, or thinking without thinking. A large part of the book is based on research about the adaptive unconscious, that is, a part of the brain that helps us make good decisions without realizing that we're even making them. Blink is about the decisions that seem to be made on a whim, but in actuality, are nowhere near as simple as they seem. Why are some people so great at making decisions, while others are paralyzingly indecisive? Why do some folks possess a consistently reliable instinct or intuition, while others almost always seem to be off the mark? What really makes us tick at work, at home, and in our relationships? And why is it that sometimes the best decisions we make both in life and in business, are almost impossible for us to explain to others. In Blink, Gladwell dives into all of the above, masterfully combining science and story to get us thinking about our lives from a new and different perspective. Big idea number one, first impressions and snap judgments. The first task of Blink is to convince you of a simple fact. Decisions made very quickly can be every bit as good as decisions made cautiously and deliberately. Our brain's ability to rapidly come to conclusions is a survival mechanism that's evolved over hundreds of thousands of years. Back in the hunter-gatherer days, human beings' lives were dependent on our ability to make super-fast, super-accurate snap judgments based on our environment and stimuli. Hunt or be hunted, right? A large portion of the way we operate occurs without much conscious thought on our behalf. In fact, we're shifting between conscious and unconscious modes of thinking all the time. To put it another way, we've got two brains to work with. The one that analyzes, categorizes, and deliberates over things, and the one that shoots first, that is, decides, takes action first, and then asks questions later. Big idea number two, your brain can size someone up in seconds. Sometimes our snap judgments about other people can be just as accurate as if we'd observed them for far longer periods of time. For example, a study conducted by psychologist Nalini Ambadi found that college students who were instructed to rate the effectiveness of their professor after watching a two-second video of them was the same as the rating given by students who sat in the same professor's class for an entire semester. We've all been told to avoid judging a book by its cover. And although that's sound advice, sometimes it doesn't make strategic sense to pull together every little relevant piece of information about a given person, place, or thing prior to taking action. Sometimes the extra info is just un necessary. Big idea number three, thin slicing. Thin slicing refers to the ability of our unconscious to find patterns in situations and behavior based on very narrow slices of experience. If you deploy Gladwell's thin slicing concept properly and regularly, you should be able to read even the most difficult and high stakes situations, so long as you can identify their underlying patterns. To illustrate this concept, Gladwell introduces us to a psychologist named John Gottman, who's observed so many different couples interacting with one another over such an extended period of time that he is capable of making accurate predictions about whether couples will stay together or not with 90% accuracy. And that's after just a few minutes of observation. Wow. In fact, there's even one specific emotion that Gottman considers to be the most important of them all. Want to guess what it is? It's contempt. As Gladwell notes in the book, if Gottman observes one or both partners in a marriage showing contempt toward the other, he considers it 
the single most important sign that the marriage is in trouble. Small, specific observations with big impact potential are prevalent in every domain of life. Watch connoisseurs can determine the authenticity of a timepiece with a momentary glance. Art experts can tell you if a piece of work is real or phony in just a minute or two. And elite basketball players have this court sense, which allows them to read how things play out on the court and whenever necessary, make adjustments in a matter of moments, in an instant. To further illustrate, Gladwell writes about a fireman who ordered his team out of a burning house just in the nick of time. His crew was trying to put out a fire in the dining area, but something just didn't feel right to the fireman. The fire seemed as if it was too hot. Just moments after the team evacuated the home, the entire house erupted like a volcano. Turns out, the main fire was actually in the basement, which explains the higher than average temperature due to the heat rising up through the floors of the home. Now, if it weren't for the fireman's instincts to withdraw his team, most, if not all, of the men fighting that fire would have died instantly. When the fireman was asked about why he made that specific judgment call at that specific time, his response was that he just knew. Statistically speaking, the majority of important decisions made under pressure would end up being off the mark. But as it turns out, people tend to make the right decisions more often than not, even when there's a very limited amount of time or information to help them come to a conclusion. An actionable insight from this big idea? You can learn to make better and more effective snap judgments in the same way you can learn more deliberative thinking. But first, it's important to understand that the brain is built to function not only for longer and more deliberate thinking, but also for shorter and more immediate thinking. Bottom line, some things just don't require long and drawn out deliberation to deliver desired results. Sometimes it simply pays to think on our feet. Big idea number four, looks can literally be deceiving. The upside of thin slicing is obvious, the ability to make quick and accurate judgment calls at the drop of a hat. But what goes up must of course invariably come down. And the downside to thin slicing is that we can rush ourselves and make inaccurate choices from time to time as well. Gladwell says that Warren Harding was elected president of the United States purely because of his outward appearance, rather than his leadership capability. Harding was tall and handsome and had a commanding voice. After many, many years, though, and much consensus that Harding was one of America's worst presidents, the explanation behind this weakness in human decision-making has come to be known as the Warren-Harding effect, which is a false assumption that a person possesses courage, intelligence, or integrity based upon good looks only, even if there's little or nothing of substance to back up their appearance. To back up this point, Gladwell conducted some research on the average height of the heads of some of America's largest companies. He learned that the average height of the CEOs of some of the biggest companies in the United States was just shy of six feet. On top of that, he found that 58% of Fortune 500 CEOs were over six feet tall. And in case you were wondering, that is taller than 85% of the American population, suggesting that people tend not only to perceive traditional leadership qualities like intelligence and an individual's ability to inspire others as important in leaders, but people also want their leaders to look the part, sometimes even at the expense of that leader's integrity. Big idea number five, snap judgments depend upon experience. Sometimes snap judgment calls can really lead to tragic consequences. Gladwell tells a story about the shooting of an innocent man at the hands of a few police officers who came to some hasty conclusions about the man's intentions. Amado Diallo an immigrant from Guinea, was standing by a New York building in the Bronx that by coincidence was also being patrolled by the police at the same time. The police officer saw Diallo, a black man, standing by the building and became very suspicious. When the officers began trying to shout him down in order to see if they could talk to him, 
Diallo became startled and went inside the building. As he began turning towards the building and heading inside, the officers, who were even more suspicious at this point, suddenly began engaging their firearms, shooting him 41 times and, of course, killing him of multiple gun wounds. Here, Gladwell quotes psychologist Keith Payne, When we make a split-second decision, we are really vulnerable to being guided by our stereotypes and prejudices, even ones we may not necessarily endorse or believe. In other words, when we are in a high pressure situation, we can't consciously shut down our implicit associations, beliefs, and behavioral tendencies because our first impressions arise from below the level of conscious awareness. For instance, a veteran police officer might have been more careful in a situation like this because they make their decisions based upon a combination of factors, including a heavy reliance on past experiences of how certain situations tend to play out, rather than relying on appearances for guidance. It wouldn't even be far-fetched to presume that some officers, those that have racked up a significant amount of experience in the field, could be experts at reading micro-expressions, which allow them to read people's intentions based on easily overlooked body language cues that signal an individual's attempt to convey the truth or an individual's attempt to conceal it.